when you had to have like that red phone that they had in Power, Powerpuff Girls, and just or red <laughs> phones are pretty cut. The president has a red phone too. We'll, yeah, slide, yeah, we'll yeah. cut out the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> That's what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. Well. That was your first instinct. Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> pa powder power. 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 Powerpuff power Girls. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, happy yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs>
buy a house, fix it up, buy it, and then build kind of an in-law suite in the back and live in this small in-law and rent out the full property value or full value um, in the main house. But by the time we got around to it, it was so much more expensive just because of materials right now to oh. refix or rehab the house than we anticipated. And then to build a whole nother unit, it was way, way more than we talked to other people about it used to be um, just a short time ago. So we had to scratch that idea and we're working on something else. Yeah. Yeah, we know all about those building materials and everything. Me and Ryan and a couple other uh, guys used to own a woodworking business, so we know the cost of lumber and everything. It's crazy right now, but uh, yeah. I've seen it to where people will simply actually, uh, one guy, I can't remember his name, but he just simply put a trailer in his driveway and made an agreement that he got to live in his trailer right there and lived out of his house. So, you know, there are multiple ways to kind of go about it. Uh, the more you can rent out, obviously, the more money you'll make, so... If you're able, yeah. you're okay with kind of living that lifestyle, you can make some serious money. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully you guys kind of get the concept at this point, what we're talking about, the way you do it for duplex or triplex, um, the way you do it for a single family home, or even owning an RV or living in an uh, in-law suite. There's so many ways, like Taylor said, to do it. And uh, hopefully you see the value in being able to start so much earlier on. Um, and oh, you can even do it actually without owning the property. Some you'd have look definitely look into this isn't a full recommendation or anything but definitely <laughs> look into it and ask uh like the rules but some or, uh like organizations or apartments or anything like that will allow you to sublease and or you so you can be the main holder on the lease and then then you have two or three bedrooms and you can rent those out um and that gives you more opportunity to cover your rent and then a little bit more so you're not spending it again you're not spending anything on housing you're making money to then go to your next house um, yeah. So that's another opportunity. Yeah. Or let's say you already have a investment property or something that could be used uh, for this. You can, you know, of course, refinance. Let's say you've done some renovations and everything. You can refinance as an owner occupant, uh, get a lower interest rate. And uh, so there's kind of all different ways you can kind of approach this, whether you own it already or don't, you know. So, you know, just yeah. make sure you look into things because different people have different restrictions on things. So, you know, be a little careful. But, there's a lot of ways to get into it. Yeah, and if you can be somewhat of a minimalist and be kind of a nomad willing to move and you look mm -hmm. at, you buy a house, move into it, live into it for a year or so, get it rented out where you're, they're paying for yourself to live and, and then some, and then move to the next place. And yeah. like Taylor said, you have that low rate um, of it being an owner occupied home and not an investment property. And you just lock it in like that for 30 years and then go to the next one, do the same thing and become unoccupied uh -huh. at that one, lock it in, live in it for a year or so, check out new states, new cities, new areas, um, find a good deal, whatever it is, move into it, get the low rate, get the cheaper closing costs, yada, 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 and work it that way and then just keep moving and keep moving. Yeah. And that if you do it that way, you'll save tons of money and you'll be able to start for much lower. Uh -huh. And this is slightly off topic, but just talking about being a nomad and everything. I don't know about any of you guys, but for a while, I wanted to live on a bus. Ryan knows about this. I For a long time, I was looking into buying a bus and just moving He still hasn't given us. Yeah, yeah. I still think every once in a while, I'll just pop in my head to go look at the price of buses and everything. Uh, I have an ideal picture of which bus I'd want, and that one's a little less common, especially seemingly in Georgia. Uh, if I'd ever go to like Arizona or something, and I fly out there for work, maybe I'll drive back in a bus. Well, who knows? Because they seem to sell a lot out there for some reason. Yeah, I've seen that RVs, school buses, school bus conversions for sure, but RV living, yeah. school bus living, uh, like nomadic style living, minimalist living is becoming more and more popular. So, uh -huh. pretty cool. Yeah, many homes have making a, or tiny homes have made a big comeback lately. I remember they used to be all the rage and like they were making yeah. shows about it on HGTV and now it's making a bit of a comeback it seems. Yeah. More oh, and yeah, you should. California has one of the worst housing crisis, and if you look at their like recent news article, this could be a cut in itself. But on um, their recent news article, they were there was something talking about how they're creating. They'll take like a room or a, a loft or something like that, and they're creating what they call hives or combs, um, and they're literally these little tiny like 
octagon looking things and they'll put a like a person in each little cone and huh. it's not big at all it's not yeah, a room, yeah. it's not anything it's just like within this space they're putting these cones uh, i don't even know how you describe it almost like a hotel with no doors or anything or space but it was very interesting i think it'd be like a shared bathroom i'm not sure i have to live i only hmm. saw the one article but it was super interesting i was like I guess that's one way to kind of counteract the yeah. housing prices. I wonder if they kind of got some inspiration from that from like Asian countries. Because I know in Japan, uh, they actually have been doing that for a long time. They call it honeycomb hotels or whatever. They actually have doors really? on it. But it's literally just like a little bed or cot. And it's a little thing. I don't, you can't even like stand up in it. I don't know if that's how it looks for those. Yeah. You just like yeah. crawl into this honeycomb and you can rent that for a night. Like I know they do that in Japan and certain Asian countries and everything. So. That's interesting. I hadn't heard about the California thing, but, huh. Yeah, no, I didn't know that was already a thing. But yeah, I was yeah. thinking, like, one, I guess, way to kind of work with this is create almost like a, uh, like, some people do those flips for the shipping containers. Almost do something yeah. like that. It's super small, but you can still fit a bed, a dresser, minimal stuff. And then you mm -hmm. can stack a bunch of them on top of each other and go wide. So you can create these, like, stacks huge stacks and have oh, yeah. tons of bedrooms and uh, yeah. That, yeah and people that love that type a, of unique living and everything living in yeah, a, it's like a little cool uh, thing like that and, yeah. mm -hmm. everyone's looking so, for that unique architecture little characteristic in their living you know yeah, everyone wants yeah, to be that's what I, yeah it's cool it's like it's something you've never done before it's something creative i would personally i would stay in something like that for a hotel uh, i oh, think sure. that's awesome but I don't know if I'd want to live in it necessarily. Not that I need this big grand house, but. Uh, like and especially if you got a family too. Yeah. 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 No, the kids would get their own unit. <laughs> Put a little doorway in the middle. Go to your trailer. <laughs> yeah, go to, yeah, it'd be go to your container. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. No, it is crazy to re read about some of the things that they're trying or getting creative with to solve the housing crisis. And mm -hmm. there was another thing talking about how it's starting to cool down with the rates going up. There's yeah, yeah. less refinancing, less purchasing. Well, not necessarily less purchasing, but uh, people are a little are good and bad. People are trying to buy less, or they can afford less. So at the same time, they're able mm -hmm. to buy less. So there's less buying in that aspect. Um, but there's also people afraid to sell um, oh, yeah. because they're going to have to buy something much much higher uh, interest rate. So they're not selling at all. So it's also kind of like counteracting each other. So yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I've, I've heard more people get more and more bold about their predictions on the real estate market, like taking a downturn or a correction or something. Yeah, we'll see about that. I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, I, I cre if you guys are curious, our thoughts or my thoughts, I posted a short the other day, a YouTube short and on TikTok about what I'm doing. If I'm still buying real estate or not or looking to buy real estate or not um yeah. it's a cool little triplex popped up next to me that's all i'm saying <laughs> yeah so back to our original topic of house hacking it is a great way to get into it because uh you can you know even if rates and expenses are so high right now being able to charge that type of uh expense for uh, you know units in your house can greatly offset that you know house hacking is kind of like a dream situation but it can't be done everywhere super easy like uh how you were living in like atlanta you don't find a lot of duplexes and triplexes for sale so right. that's when you would kind of get creative with like single house units so you're renting a room or you know a little extra housing unit or rv or whatever so you just got to get creative for your area there's always seen or there's always a way to do things in real estate there's so many things you can yeah, do yeah and all, always double check your local laws your ordinance uh -huh, all of that sure. sometimes they don't like that I know yeah. in the county near us, they don't like more than two people of different last names to live in one house. Um, so uh -huh. that makes it hard to rent out. That makes it hard to do a lot of things, to uh, do per bedroom rentals, like a college town. You can't do that. Um, so yeah. there's a lot of things you can and can't do depending on the area. And some people, some areas are getting stricter, some areas are loosening up. So constantly check that and look into that. Um, yeah. It's a big part of it. Yeah, a lot of people think they can get away with it. And frankly, if we're being 100% honest, a lot of people do. But if you do get caught, you are yeah. you could be in some serious trouble financially and just living-wise. So 
Yeah, and you also want to make sure that, so house hacking is a good way to afford something more than you can by yourself by doing that projected rent. We also don't want to flex yourself too much. So yeah. have uh, whenever I'm calculating a property to see if it's worth its value or what they're selling it for, if you're getting a good deal, I always calculate in a vacancy. Um, so if you didn't have it rented out for say a month um, mm -hmm. or three weeks of the year, how much that's going to cost you, add that in to the cost of every month. So just in case you do lose a renter, they leave early, you have to evict them anything like that, or a roommate drops, or there's a fight, whatever it is, you can still handle the mortgage. You can still handle everything with a vacancy, or if you have multiple units, you have a vacancy in the number of units, not just time. So if you have multiple yeah. units, and for three weeks, calculate that in, and go, okay, now with that, calculate the mortgage, the taxes, all of that, is it still, am I still getting a good deal? If so, then you're like, okay, I'm getting a deal. If you're not, yeah. then again, then don't stretch, don't go, okay, if I'm able to get 100% occupancy and I can only Airbnb it, so I'm getting three, four times market rent, then it's a good deal. Then that means you're stretching it way too thin. That means there's literally one chance, one way you're going to make what yeah, you need. Yeah. And so yeah. just, just be careful about that too. I saw some people in this space who uh, had bought a duplex and they were renting out their other unit, but they had, you know, their expenses and everything had come up and everything. and. They had a brief vacancy, yeah. so they actually had to turn to not only renting their unit, but also airbnb a room in their house, which they didn't initially want to do, but they were forced to because yeah. they you know, hadn't planned ahead for any vacancies and stuff. So you do have to be careful before you get forced in an uncomfortable situation. Yeah, and, and I posted something on this recently, uh, again on TikTok and YouTube Shorts, but basically you gotta kinda be, the best way to thrive in this world is to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. You gotta be willing to put yourself out there. You gotta be, obviously do it within reason and with care, but you gotta be, just because you like living alone and you don't wanna deal with a roommate, that's a luxury you're giving yourself. So if you're yeah. dealing with a roommate, you're also getting paid to deal with that roommate, so it might be worth it, especially the rent you're getting out of them. Mm -hmm. So you, got, you kinda gotta be a little bit uncomfortable, be willing to put yourself out there, meet those people um, that can, one, teach you everything or teach you a lot of things, but also that can, again, that you're so you're comfortable going, you know what, this might not be my favorite thing, but if he's going to pay or she's going to pay for my rent, my living, and I'm living kind of stress-free in this crazy market, it, it's worth that much for sure. Yeah, and that's just a healthy practice, you know, expanding your comfort zone, doing more things that make you uncomfortable. Eventually, at least yeah. hopefully, you'll become comfortable with those things and you can keep pushing yourself to where you know, you can make even more opportunities for yourself. Exactly, exactly. And then the next time that comes up, you're not even questioning it. You're like, oh, yeah. okay, I gotta go find a roommate because this one's running up soon. Or, hey, I used to be afraid to go walk up and talk to that person, but now I can talk to him like it's no problem. I'll just tap him on the shoulder, mm -hmm. make a quick joke, and then we're into this conversation. Or this mentor, I've always wanted to ask him to be my mentor. Now I've, I've got that courage, I've got that confidence to walk up and say, say what I've got to say, talk to him, show him what I can learn. Uh, show them what I can do um, and it just gives you that credibility it gives you that uh, that drive and again that's gonna, how, kind of how you're gonna thrive is being comfortable being in the uncomfortable which is crazy yeah. but it helps a lot yeah for sure but as right. always this is a quick little clip of something new when we can just kind of chit chat and talk about our feet or not our feelings our thoughts and <laughs> what we're thinking on ideas Therapy. and the news coming out then you're like, okay, you can see kind of our thought process, how we do the day to day, how we plan yeah. out things. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit better, hopefully. So let mm -hmm. us know what you guys think and thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks guys.